Welcome to this video on Stable Diffusion Web UI. In this episode we'll have a closer look at writing prompts. This image, I found it on a wonderful website called civit.ai and well uh, admittedly this is a, a beautiful drawing with beautiful lighting and the prompt used for it is this. Well that is quite a mouthful. Uh, is this really necessary? I wondered. Well to tell you the truth prompt building can be a lot of trial and error and it is not always straightforward what you write down is what you get. This prompt will have taken a, a lot of trial and error and there was also a negative prompt involved. Uh, do they always need to be this long? Well, no, they don't. Uh, these are six images which are not too bad at all. A build with only one word in the prompt and that word was scenery. So you can already get quite nice and beautiful images with a very short prompt. There are uh, little tricks that uh, can help us building prompts. So let's have a look at what we can do to make our lives easier. An easy thing to do would be to try find images with their prompts to learn from that. If I would type in stable diffusion image search there are plenty of websites that I can select. This is one of them, Prompt Hero. It offers a stable diffusion, click over here and then your version of mine is 1.5 and there are yeah, lots of images and what we can do is click one and that opens a new window and there we can simply copy the prompt that was used to generate this image. So let's try that out. Let me copy and paste that prompt over there and the image size we need to take care that that is correct. Uh, vertical, uh, yeah that's correct. Then uh, CFG 7 steps 50 and unf oh the seed is of course very important. Let me first copy the seed over here and then steps 50 that's okay. CFG 7 is okay. Unfortunately there was no sampling method mentioned and in that case I always select Euler and in many cases that will work. Let's select an image and see what comes out. And to no surprise, because every parameter was exactly the same, we get the exact same image. Well, that is of course a nice start. But yeah, it is a little bit cheating. We want to build our own images. So let's start from scratch with an empty field and then see how we can generate our own image. I wrote this prompt, a photo of a golden retriever puppy playing with a ball in the grass. Let's generate six images and see what we get. Well, there's already one, two, oh they are cute aren't they? And well, uh, stable diffusion does exactly what we asked it to do. So that is already quite nice. Here they are, six puppies in the grass with a ball. Well, some of them have a ball, some don't. That is interesting. The sentence that we used is more or less normal speech. Mm, personally, I prefer another way of doing it and that is like this. Photo, comma, golden retriever, comma, puppy, comma, playing, comma, ball, comma, grass. To me uh, that makes it a bit more analytical so to speak. And let's generate and see if we get more or less similar images. Uh, every time when you change a word in the prompt you will get different images. That's because it starts with this noise pattern and then it starts to generate images. But as we can see, normal speech sentence and now these different images with a comma separated keywords, they are quite similar. But you don't always know what you get. But there are ways to improve that.
One way to influence is to start using the negative prompt which describes what we don't want to see. And to demonstrate that we are going to use this image from another wonderful website stablediffusionart.com. It has a wealth of very well written tutorials so please have a look over there. We are going to borrow this prompt over here. And of course also the seed. Well, I already entered the seed to speed up a little bit, but let me uh, put that prompt over there. And let's generate uh, the image. We should get exactly that same image. And well, uh, we do. Now we have uh, quite a few people on this image. So if we want to get rid of a few people, what we could do is write the word people in the negative prompt and then generate again and see if we maybe get less people. Well, indeed we do. Uh, actually all people are gone but one. That is already an, uh, yeah, going in the direction we intended, so that's good. Now suppose I want to get rid of that last person also. What we can do is give certain words more emphasis or what's called attention. The way to do that, there are two ways to do it, is use uh, this method, uh, one, two, three. You can also use um, one bracket or two bracket, but I found that I need three to get rid of this person. These brackets mean uh, every bracket is more or less 10% extra emphasis on that word. So if I would generate it now with 1.3 so to speak emphasis look uh, all of a sudden that final person is also gone just by giving that word people more attention personally i seldom or actually never use these multiple brackets there's a much simpler way to do it uh, click the word that you want to emphasize and then hit the control and arrow up or arrow down look what it automatically wrote over there emphasis 1.3 and that is of course a much easier and quicker way to do this let's try it in the positive prompt uh, over here it says roses and flowers well i cannot say that i see many roses and flowers so let me put some emphasis control uh, up uh, on the roses and then on the flowers i don't know if 1.3 is enough maybe 1.5 why not and then generate it again. Uh, we should see at least a little bit different. Oh my God, yeah, I, I maybe overdid it a little bit. Uh, but I do have roses here in the front and over there and a lot of flowers or even the trees got different colors. And my people are back. Yeah, well, if you change one thing, then you will get a different result. Uh, uh, it always takes trial and error. Um, another way to give emphasis, let me first put these back down to uh, zero or one, I should say. Uh, another way to give emphasis is to put the words uh, at the front of your prompt, uh, like this. Uh, words at the front get a higher emphasis than words at the back. So now my roses and flowers are here in the front. And uh, well, let's see what that creates. Um, again, a different image, uh, no people this time, but indeed I got roses and flowers. So that seems to work well. You can use the emphasis or attention, or you can put the important words at the front of the prompt, which of course only works if you have a long prompt like this. Okay, one more time. I see here the word bridge. Do we see a bridge in the image? No, I don't. So there we go. Up the importance a little bit. And let's see if we get a bridge now. And yeah, to my surprise, I did get a bridge. A bit strange location, but it's there. So we really see that this attention, it's really working. All right, so we can emphasize things? Now, interesting question, can we also de-emphasize things? Well, yes, we can. Let's create a luxurious living room with red pillows and 
plants. And here it is. This is our living room. But well, those pillows, well, they are quite aggressive to the eye and a bit much. So let's try to lessen them. Uh, it's two words, so I cannot click it. I have to select the two words and then control arrow down. Let's make it 0.8. That should make it some less aggressive red. I hope at least. And yeah, there it is, uh, a, a bit less pillows in view. This emphasis or de-emphasis is one way to control what we see. In the meantime, without maybe noticing it, something in the background happened, which is called association. Uh, I asked for red pillows, but I also got a red couch. Yeah, that is because maybe from the training model, red pillows uh, are mostly on red couches and not on green couches. Uh, this is called association and let's do an example of it. Let's do a girl age 25 with blue eyes in a cafe. And let's see if we generate six of them. Let's see what is going to happen. One, two. Well, they have blue eyes, <laughs> really blue eyes, by the way. Uh, and also we see uh, yeah, other blue details in the image. Uh, this is what happens. Uh, the eyes are much too blue, but that can be helped uh, with certain tricks later. But we see, yeah, there is quite some blue in these images and we also get a certain type of girl. Now let's change only one word. From blue we go to brown eyes and now look what happens. It's not only the color of the eyes that change, the color of the entire image changes. We get now no blue shirts, we get brown shirts and we get in general more brownish colors in the image and also the girls themselves they have changed a little bit to more Asian, Southern European girls. So one word change actually changes the whole atmosphere of the image. That is uh, interesting. Uh, but that also means that, yeah, probably we'll, we will have to do a lot more trial and error to get what we want if we want to go to a specific image that we have in mind. Stable diffusion starts with noise, so it is not always predictable what it does, but this association, well, we know now that it is there, so if we ask for brown, we get a lot of brown, not only in the eyes. What we have seen in the meantime that just one word like a red pillow or blue eyes or brown eyes can have a great influence on the overall image. This is what I call key words. And uh, well, remember that a very long prompt at the beginning of the video, I added that prompt here and also that long negative prompt. It's full of keywords as we can see. And the question is, do we really need all these keywords? And how heaven on earth can I create a picture if I need to do this much? Um, well, the next video we will have a closer look at the keywords that have a large influence and the ones that have less influence. Just as an example, let me generate this image or let's do two. We will not get the exact same image because I don't have the model installed that they used. I have only my one model available from the installation. That is the subject of another video. But we can generate uh, two images with this prompt and see what we get out. Well, not even a bad image, uh, even though we don't have that exact same model. Nice images, by the way, highly detailed and so on. Uh, that's, that's great. Uh, now the question is, do we really need all these words? Well, just for fun, uh, let's take out a whole line of words, just delete that. Uh, and see what happens next if I press generate again. I now have uh, thrown one third of the words away. Yeah, the image is different, but is it that much different? No, it isn't. So this means to me that half of those keywords that were used uh, yeah, were there for uh, no reason at all. It doesn't help that much. 
But then the question is, what are the keywords that do matter? And that is the subject of the next video. Uh, let's uh, uh, stop this one with one more example of how one keyword can change the whole image. Here we have one word in the prompt, uh, no negative prompt. And we are going to generate four images and see what comes out. And even with one word, you can already get stunning images. At least these are not bad in my view. Actually, they are quite nice, great images to start with and maybe tinker with. Let's now add one word, cinematic, matic, and generate images again. And what we will see is that we get four completely different images. However, they are indeed more cinematic in their uh, approach and well, they look more dramatic, more movie-like. Uh, so this is just one word that we could use uh, with any rendering we like to make. But now the question is, uh, how do I find these words and how do I know on beforehand in what direction they steer the output? That will be the subject of the next video. Maybe see you back there. In the meantime, have fun.